If you haven't guessed it yet, yes, this is going to be another photo shoot in an epic location. Welcome to Arches National Park. I'm on another father-son trip through the southwest. Despite being winter, dad wanted to check out Arches. The entrance from Moab is possibly the most epic park entrance I've ever experienced to date. The winding road up the side of a cliff really sets the stage for the natural wonders that you're about to see. Our first stop is Balanced Rock. Yep, this thing is big. You have to kind of wonder how much longer until it comes rolling down. Next up is North Window. There are several arches to see from this immediate area. When photographing here, expect there to be people in your images. Hi Dad! I'll put a link in the description to my episode on how to use the context aware healing tool in Lightroom to help you remove people from your photos. What I love about this place is that the landscape is almost alien. I mean, just look at this thing. This type of rock formation is just not something you find every day. Heading down Delicate Arch Road, we find an open four-wheel drive road. Well, we got some dirt on the tires. I think this is the edge of the park. Let's see. Ugh. Entering Arches National Park. This is a protected area. That's one way to make an entrance. So yeah, I had to get a little dirt on the tires. The off-road army comes out every once in a while. As we drive through the park to our next stop, I just want to say thank you to some of my newest subscribers. I know this list is a bit dated, but I'm editing this episode on January 1st. If you're not already a subscriber, I would enjoy your company every week as I continue this journey. Also, if you could, give this video a thumbs up and a comment. That really helps with the YouTube algorithm. We are squeezing our way to Sand Dune Arch. Hidden in between some towering rocks is a hidden gem in the park. Now, while I'm filming on this cold day, you may notice I finally caved in and got myself some heated gloves. What a difference they make. You will see me using them a lot in the cold. Here in the shade where it's really cold, I'm having no problems operating my camera. And just to let you know how cold it is, check out the ice in the desert. It's a good thing we're spending the day here. This trail from the Fiery Furnace parking lot is only a few hundred feet long, but it leads to some spectacular views. I'm actually considering the spot for a sunset shoot later tonight. After going back to Moab for a bite to eat and some coffee, it's time for the evening photo shoot. As we head back into the park, I would like to invite you to check out patreon.com forward slash EWJ for my bonus content. All funds from supporters like you go 100% to replacing and expanding my photography equipment. For those of you already members of the EWJ community, thank you. I really do appreciate all of you. Hey everybody, this is going to be our evening photo shoot. Now, we're right beside the main road, so I'm sorry if you get a lot of noise from cars going by. So, driving up and down this road, I knew I wanted the LaSalle Mountains here in the background to be the evening photo shoot. And so far, it looks like this is a great decision. We tried a couple of stops along the way. We were decided, my dad and I, we decided to park um, at the last pull-off before you get into the bouncing rock parking area. And what's really cool is there's a bunch of rock spires out there. Uh, and then some of the petrified sand dunes. And then way on the distance, the snow-covered LaSalle Mountains. And there's those light, wispy clouds in the air, which means we are probably going to get some great color tonight. We're going to be here a little while for at least an hour, so I'm going to get the camera set up, and we'll see what happens. All right, so I just turned the heaters back on in the gloves and I'm starting to feel the warmth in my fingertips. So these may be a really good investment. If you guys remember 
like a couple years ago at the Grand Canyon. It was negative six degrees. I had these thin little running gloves. Yeah, these are definitely, definitely a lot warmer. Oh, by the way, if you're interested, take a look at the description and uh, you get a link where you can pick these things up. Best of all, I don't even have to take them off to use my touch screen. So one of the things I'm doing here is I'm practicing my rule about taking three shots because when you're in a location that you probably won't get back to, you don't want to risk a bad setting on your camera ruining an image. So I'm taking three shots of everything, so I've got three chances to get it right. And here the light is just absolutely spectacular right now. Uh, we are getting close to sunset. As you can hear, people are leaving the park, but I'm sticking around to see what we can get out of this image. This location has some potential. This uh, rock formation in particular with the distant mountains is drawing my attention. With the sunset happening, panos can be tricky. The key is to know your camera and to have your technique down before you're rushing against the fading light. Before I sign off, I just wanted to share with all of you what I didn't film. In the darkened night, I came back and practiced some astrophotography. Definitely some room for improvement, but I'll be heading back out into the night once Milky Way season starts to try a new technique that I've been studying. And of course, I'll share it with all of you. Thank you.